Hello again everybody. This video is all about the guitar top which is um, visually important in that it's perhaps the first thing that people look at on a guitar but of course sound wise it's also the most important element of the instrument. Um, it's also quite a complex part um, with elaborate bracing which kind of interlocks and so on. So with all this it um, I hope it justifies a video to itself. Um, I have to apologize for there's a low frequency hum somewhere in my system. I don't think it's internal to the recording system. I'm just using a, an iPhone with a battery mic. So I don't think it's that. It, it may be lighting or I, I'm not sure what. Um, it's not bothersome at normal speeds, but as soon as I speed the video up, of course, the frequency jumps up and it, um, it's a real nuisance. So I'm very sorry about it. Um, I, you know, I, until I find it, I can't get rid of it. Um, if anybody has any suggestions, then I'd be glad if you put them in the comments. Perhaps somebody's come across a similar issue. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoy the video despite this. Um, it begins with solving a problem. I've encountered a bit of a problem here with my copper rosette. It turns out it's not as round as I need it to be. And I think what's happened is when I was cutting it out, I used a Dremel, this kind of arrangement. Uh, and I think there was probably enough flex in the mounting of the, the Dremel. This is un only plastic after all, um, for the, the cutter to have wandered slightly around the diameter or the circumference rather of the, of the circles. Uh, it's not much, it's certainly less than a millimetre, but um, I have to try and correct it because um, it just won't look good in the end if, if these aren't perfectly parallel and we don't have a smooth circular curve. There will be a white band against both edges of the ring. So it really needs to be a perfect circle. So I'm going to try and um, round it off properly. I'm going to glue this down temporarily and then I'll be able to just sand off or slice off a tiny bit around the outside and I hope this will be enough to even the circle. Um, the problem will then be how to get it off but I think I've that should be an easy one if I use fish glue. If I then float this in water and the wood gets wet, the, the glue will just um, separate. I have to be careful because I'm not sure about this patina, whether any of that will dissolve in water. So I'm going to have to try and get the wood damp or wet um, without any water getting onto the top of the ring. I've got tape over it anyway to protect it, but of course if water gets under, that wouldn't really help. So that's the plan. So I'm just scratching up the surface, the underside of the ring to give the glue something to key onto. It's extremely sticky stuff. So you want to, it gets everywhere. You need to keep it on a finger you're not going to use for anything else. Ah, now what I should have done is drawn some circles first because now I don't know where the center of this is. Right, that looks about right. Okay, so I've now gone round the rosette ring inside and out. 
I'm pretty sure the cutter isn't wandering and I'm confident that I've now got the inside and outside edges completely parallel and concentric. Here's my uh, rosette, which I'm very happy with. Um, it's still looking a little bit rough around the edges because I've, I haven't have scraped it down properly to the surface of the top yet uh, because I have deliberately left the copper part um, slightly below the level of the uh, top wood so that I can put some lacquer in to fill, to bring it up to the level of the top wood which will then protect the copper underneath when I go to sand everything down to make it completely flat. If I put the topper, copper up at the level of the top wood, then of course I was in, I'd be in danger of sanding through some of the patina on the copper, so it needed to be below. The um, purpling or the strips around the outside at the moment are forming a kind of dam, a wall, for me to put the, the lacquer in. I could use casting resin or lacquer but I think I'll just go for lacquer because it's it's not a big difference in in height so I don't think I need the, the sort of big guns of casting resin but uh, anyway this is the the end look which I'm very happy with the the other thing I've been toying with which I quite often do is is to add extra rings around the outside of black white black purfling um, but I've I've tried it and honestly I think it detracts from from the the look this is rather a striking looking rosette just as it is so um, I'm going to keep it simple the next job will be to cut out the sound hole As far as the top's concerned, I'm happy with the rosette, finally, um, for now at any rate. I'm not sure it's quite at the level it needs to be. I might need to make some adjustment later by adding some more lacquer, but for the moment I'm going to leave it. Um, but the thing I've decided to do on the top is, for the first time, for me anyway, to try and do an arm bevel, but not the, not the traditional type, if I can call it that. Um, which has a block of wood on the inside and then you chamfer or bevel the block uh, cutting into the top and the side but, and then cover it with the decorative veneer which it looks fantastic, very nice but um, I feel it takes quite a lot of the vibrating area of the top away because of this block on the inside um, which is often can be quite large um, and I prefer to minimize that and keep as much of the top producing sound as possible. So I've decided to go for a, a bent um, bevel where the top wood itself is bent over along this line um, which is quite a small area. This isn't my idea by the way, it's um, people like um, Sheldon Schwartz and Tom Ray in Canada have done this kind of bevel before. Um, 
the bevel itself would be quite subtle, something like this, so quite small, and obviously the binding would have to, as it does on the other kind of bevel, the binding on the side would have to follow this curve around. Um, and I'm not quite sure how to do that yet, but um, I'll figure it out. Um, so I'm looking forward to trying that. It'll be something interesting and new. And of course the end result, I hope, will be a more comfortable guitar to play. And I've left a little bit of extra wood on this side. just finished the bend in the top for the arm bevel and I'm I'm really pleased with the way it's come out it's absolutely exactly what I wanted more by luck than judgment but um, I'll try and show it to you close up it's quite a s small quite subtle but I think it'll make all the difference to the playability not playability but the comfort of playing it's uh, and it's not so low that it's going to give me massive problems when I come to bind the thing. This is something which is, has been making me hesitate slightly about even doing this in the first place because I've got an ebony binding and it's um, notoriously uncooperative when it comes to bending, especially in, I don't think there's any way I could get a full height binding to to bend down and follow that curve so I've got a plan for doing that um, which I'm going to do a couple of tests and and see but um, the amount that it'll have to bend is really quite small um, so all in all I'm absolutely delighted with the way this has turned out and I think it was a good good decision to uh, to give it a go I'm really pleased just a little off the top edge it doesn't quite follow the line yet that's got it same thing and the fact that the um, the top will eventually be in a in a bow like the um, like the back, although it's a much less severe one. It's ten meter radius rather than five. This will easily conform to that, so I can just glue it down flat and not worry about the the bow. If the grain had been along this axis, then. I would have glued it up in the radius dish but it's not necessary with the grain running this way. These small braces, the finger braces, the tone bar and these um, A braces for want of a better word, they've all had their, uh, well these haven't but the, the ones on the lower half have all had their undersides 
um, sanded in the 10 meter radius dish um, and then planed on the so on the gluing surface again just one shaving as as I've done before um, and the next thing I'm going to do is to standardize the height of the the part that's going to go into the X brace uh, because these will lock in underneath the X brace so it'll form a, uh, a rigid structure so I've got the Dremel set up here um, I'm just going to feed these in on the part that's been roughly cut and that should make sure that all of the all of these parts here are at a standard height so it'll be easy later to uh, put the corresponding holes in the X brace to fit them. Uh so you can see these small ones have worked fine and uh, I can tidy up here where it was a bit more awkward I can just uh, do by hand with a chisel. glued all these small braces in place and I've partly shaped the ends which will go next to the X brace um, because once that's in place you you can't easily um, do any shaping so um, before I actually glue the X brace I'm going to finish shaping this end here and round off these because these are visible from inside the sound hole so um, you want to make them look a little nicer than they do at the minute. Um, then it'll be a question of cutting slots in the X brace in the right place so that that sits properly on the um, on the top of the guitar, and then the X brace can be glued in.
Here's the top after gluing on all the braces. Um, the braces were just glued on in the same way as um, you've seen me do on the back on previous videos. Um, everything is nice and tight, particularly the X-brace cross joint, which is obviously a very important one. But um, all the other structural and other joints are nice and tight as well, which should make for a happy sounding guitar. Now the braces are carved um, and sanded down to their final thickness. The top is at the right degree of flexibility as far as I'm concerned. Um, the only thing left to do now is to put the tiny cross piece here which bridges the gap um, between the, the parts of the brace here which are effectively open um, Irvin Samaji calls this the most important gram of wood in the whole of the guitar. Basically it's just a little tiny cap of wood which will bridge that gap and I've saved a bit of the brace wood so it's exactly the right thickness. So I'm going to cut a very thin strip, glue it on and then plane it down, sand it so it will um, sort of blend in with the rest of the brace. Is another small mistake which I'll come clear about, um, come clean about, I should say. Um, I accidentally glued this on upside down um, because I'd already cut this end, well, the two ends to uh, match the curve of the guitar. Uh, it's not going to make any difference in practice, it just means I have to cut this off, which I would have avoided um, if I'd done it the right way round. And it's worth avoiding because it's hard to get the saw in here without marring any of the other wood around. I can't get my little Dremel uh, rig in for getting a consistent height. The, um, the arms on it are too wide to go into this gap, so I'm having to do this one by hand. I'll try and make them as even as possible on both sides, but it's not a big deal if there's a tiny difference. I can, I'm going to measure the height of each one when I make the pocket in the lining later anyway. The great thing is to ensure that there's enough, um, that the height is consistent for at least the depth of the lining. You don't want it wedge shaped because then you you have a gap inside the pocket, which is not really what you want. That's four and a half. Well, that was a lucky guess. <laughs> four and a half on the nose. Perfect. Well that was it. Um, the body is actually in one piece now. I've glued the top on but I haven't yet done the binding. So you'll see that in the next video along with the neck which I've started work on and the fingerboard of course. Um, and I hope I'll bring that video out because I've already got the footage, I just haven't edited it. Um, I hope that'll come out a bit more quickly than this one did. So until then, goodbye for now.